Hey, hello everyone. Uh, we are back for episode number two, and we have a bit of a list of things we're going to try and get done today. We've got to take care of our normal camp business here, then we're going to take back the uh, workshop to go get us a hazmat suit for our later part of our plans, as well as power up Poseidon and uh, get the generator blueprint that we get from that. So, without further ado, let's get to it. Okay, so first thing on my list is to scrap everything that I don't have already and get it all stored. Okay, so we did have some stuff to store there. I'll go ahead and store that baseball green for now. I don't want to be too tempted to use a lot of our throwables since those will be very useful when we go to actually trying to power level. Alright, next thing on the list was to see about crafting a bunch of steel daggers here. And the third thing I had listed here is that I want to make sure that we get leveled up. We've got four levels that we're waiting on, so let's get to it. Let's see what we eat in our perk pack. Ah, uh, not too bad. Next level is going to be traveling pharmacy. Born survivor. Serendipity. And a point into strength, but we're going to put one more point into serendipity. Now, since we don't have any instruments that we can actually play. We'll go ahead and get our well-rested bonus to start us out. And then whenever we take over the food factory, we'll um, get the well-tuned bonus. Oh, man. Uh, 30 seconds goes by quick. Ah, anyways. All right, so now we are done at camp. We can go ahead and I guess we can check on here, see if we've gotten anything else. Take those crystals. And we are going to head to the factory. Okay, so the factory is already taken, but uh, we are going to go ahead and stop in here and grab this pitchfork, as we are going to be a two-handed build. And we can't use the instrument that is in there, so we're going to hop up to Vault 76 real quick, and then we're going to use the instruments that are in the top of that uh, tower that I showed you in Episode 1. Instrument tower. We'll get our well-tuned bonus, and I'll be right back. And there we go. Part of our goals for today is to get enough stuff to start making Molotov cocktails for when we're going to be power leveling here later. Um, not sure that we're going to end up running into a lot of that stuff just naturally, but we're going to try and collect as much of it as we can in episode two here. Now I'm going to jump back to camp, and we'll start our way down to Poseidon. So Poseidon Energy is actually all the way down here. Oh, there's actually an event going on. Excellent. This is a level two nuclear alert. This is exactly why you want to have a good supply of caps to start out with as soon as you can. So that way you can fast travel if opportunities like this present itself. So we have to at least help in this process some. And it looks like nobody's actually started on it yet, so we are going to go ahead and complete this. I don't know if this guy's wanting to claim this workshop or not. I had planned to, but since somebody else beat us here, I'm not going to snatch it out from under him. And also, normally we would need to claim the workshop so we could have a place to store all of our junk. But since we didn't have to walk here, we're going to be a little bit lighter on junk. But we will probably end up having a lot of materials that we'll need to break down, so... Let's see if we can go ahead and finish clearing this. I think you are the last one I needed to get. Yep, there's my 20 caps for clearing the workshop. Let's see if the guy... 
spoofed cheese. Level 15. I don't know if he's going to want to try and claim this from us or not. Worst case scenario, it's going to cost us nine caps. All right, great. The workshop is ours. We're going to have to defend it in a minute, but that's not really a big problem. We will just see about putting down a couple of quick foundations here so we can get back to this place quickly if we have to. Got to put down a fast travel mat as one of our priorities. And we'll go ahead and plunk down a few turrets here just in case, but I'm not planning on really trying to defend this place. Hopefully he doesn't want to actually fight for it. Our priority now is to get this up and running. So you can actually complete this quest in a couple of different, uh, I guess, finished levels. You can actually go through and completely repair every single thing, or you can partially repair it. I generally go through the extra effort of repairing it completely, if I'm going to repair it at all. So that's what we're going to try to do, but if it looks like this guy is just going to activate it as soon as we get partially done, then we'll just uh, go with that. I hate it when the throwing daggers don't equip. Okay, we're going to have to defend the yard here shortly, but we do have a quick location we can go back to. I'm going to try and repair as much as I can before I have to travel back. Ow. We fast traveled back real quick. We've got a couple seconds left before our defense begins. Throwing knives here real quick. And it looks like it's going to be scorched, so that will help us get uh, some more steel as well, as long as we don't end up using a bunch of our throwing knives on them. Let's see if I can level up. This is the level that we're going to get. Slugger. Ten percent won't do a ton, but it will help. What? Why did they spawn in my base? Just silly. What? <laughs> I have never seen them do this before. This could be um, problematic, to say the least. Oh, please. I didn't want to have to go through stim packs, but I'm thinking it might be the case. That was ridiculous. Like eight of them crammed into this little cabin. It was like a clown car. Excellent. And we finished defending Poseidon. So, let's see what the bonus was we got on this. File cabinets. Not too bad. Let's go ahead and learn all of the notes that we have, just in case we get a new one here soon. Okay, now if we get any new ones, it shouldn't give us a copy from a quest. Okay, we refavorited our pitchfork to the new one that's slightly better as far as overall durability. And now we are going to scrap all of the other pitchforks and fingers crossed we will get the modification for this ah oh, darn didn't get it now we're gonna run over here and get the other cooling tower finished 
We've got 43 minutes left on the quest. Should have plenty of time. Even if the game goofs up like it did in my dry run. So, let's see if we can get this finished. I just remembered that we need to go up onto the roof and get our radiation suit uh, before we level much more. And so we can also do the reactor portion of this repair without taking on a whole bunch of radiation. So now we need to get upstairs. So there should be some stairs on this side and we're going to work our way up and hopefully the hazmat suit's still going to be there. Okay, so if the hazmat suit is here, it's going to be in this trailer. Oh god, please don't die to these guys. Oh, I'm going to grab it before I die. Just in case I die. Okay, so I'm not certain how this works, but every time I've grabbed a suit and been past level 20, it has actually been maxed out on far as its level. Now, since the guy that was here before me was level 15, this might have spawned for him. But on my other dry run, where I was level 7 and I ran this, I, that suit was actually level 5. So, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to put it on right now. But there will be some damaged suits inside that I can potentially use. Okay, one of the only ways that you can get into the uh, power plant while it's on lockdown is actually through these cooling towers. So, that's the way we're going in. Okay, well this seems incredibly familiar because we crashed during transition. Apparently that is a glitch currently. So, we're going to have to do this over again. Okay, well, uh, ended up completing powering up Poseidon, but while stuck outside the entire time, I was looking for the other entrance to get in. I could not remember uh, because the other times when I've gotten in there, the doors have all been out of uh, safety lockdown. Uh, one thing that you do whenever you go in there is you access the security terminal and you can tell it to end emergency lockdown on the building and it will open up all of these security doors to where other people can get in straight through those. Um, so whoever did get inside, uh, they didn't open up those doors. But after doing a little bit of research and finding out, you are supposed to be able to get in by going into the expansion here, and then you would end up coming in from the bottom side of Poseidon and accessing it near, close to where the reactor is, actually. Okay, so one of the things we were wanting to get was the crop setup so we can get uh, adhesive started back in our camp. Um, so we're gonna need some corn for that, and I think if we don't do any extra jumping around or traveling, the fastest way to get corn is to head over here and uh, get some from these fields that are going to be over in this direction. So we're going to grab some of that and uh, possibly I think there's some potatoes over there too. Or no, it's razor grain. And uh, we'll head back up to our camp and plant some potatoes, meat, fruit, and corn. Well, I just stumbled across Camp Adams apparently on my way across to get those vegetables. So we'll see what's here. See if anything comes of it. Oh god. Super mutants. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do this. Oh, by the way, apparently I picked up the uh, mutation of talons, so I actually caused targets to bleed quite a bit when I punched them. So if I could actually find some knuckles or something, uh, it might not be a bad turn of luck to have gotten mutated in such a way. We'll go ahead and head up here, since this is on the way, we'll stop up here and get a look around at all of the other landmarks. Whenever you climb to the top of one of these towers, it gives you the option to survey the area. Just like this. And our map starts to update with all of these new things. So you'll even see them populating around us here. So our goal is going to be to the Billings Homestead, because that's where there's a bunch of corn. Um, and then I, th or well, no, actually, I think the corn is up here at the Silva Homestead. But corn's the one thing we're not going to be able to find up towards where our camp is. So we shall get it on the way. Also, while we're here at the camp, we're going to go ahead and level up. We've got a couple level ups waiting for us. Let's see what we get for cards. All right, green thumb. That was one I was really hoping for. Okay, we should be able to finish up serendipity.
And level one makeshift warrior. Make our pitch pitchfork last a little bit longer. And we're off. Okay, so I may have gotten distracted on the way there. Um, <laughs> I'm at the Billings Homestead right now, and it has given me the quest to claim the workshop. I don't know that I'm going to go ahead and do that, but I am grabbing a lot of razor grain. Because even if I don't cook this into anything, it is worth one cap a piece if I have really low charisma. And if I were able to get my charisma up high enough, um, might be able to actually sell it for two a piece. But I don't think I'm going to be able to get it that high. So I'm going to keep picking on this stuff here until I get at risk of overweight, which is still a ways off. And then I'm going to go pick some corn in that direction. So I ended up getting 176 razor grain from over there. So uh, definitely going to be able to sell that pretty quick. Um, main problem is that the merchant's actually going to run out of caps before I can sell much more. So I'm not probably going to grab too much more corn here unless I'm going to try and jump over to Sutton. Because the responder merchant has a pool of 200 caps and the uh, raider merchant, which I believe the one at Sutton is classified as a raider merchant, has a pool of 200 caps that's separate. So we might actually be able to get up to 200 caps from each. So I'm probably still going to go ahead and max out on corn here just to have it <laughs> and uh, head up towards our camp to plant some of the corn then up to Flatwoods to sell it. Okay, I just heard the noise for getting over encumbered. And so if you're curious where I got all this stuff, it is right in here. Billings Homestead has all of the razor grain and uh, Silva Homestead has all of the corn. Uh, which you can pick loads and loads of. And I am currently at 68 corn, but I am now at weight. So any more and I will be over encumbered. So I might as well just go ahead and jump back before I am. <laughs> I really like that uh, Talon mutation. I don't think I've ever gotten that one before. Or if I have, I've never actually used it because of the requirement to be unarmed. So, oh god, I got encumbered. And of course, fertile so soil's going on, so I may stop to do that real quick. Well, and by stop, I mean I might continue it, because I killed the supervisor back there and... I've got 28 minutes to conclude it, so I don't really see any reason why I should skip it. Okay, made it back to the church. I ended up getting encumbered again, but I couldn't drop anything, so... Well, I could, I just chose to stay encumbered. <laughs> Okay, that merchant has the spiked boxing glove mod, and the boxing gloves are actually just up here at the hotel, or motel. So I'm going to go investigate if those are there so we can make the most of this mutation. The mutation, by the way, is talons. So we get 25% unarmed damage, and we get bleeding damage. And so there's usually loads and loads of lead in here, and they actually left a couple behind, probably because they're camouflaged on the floor. But um, what I am here for is this boxing glove. So let's see what the boxing glove does. 26 damage. And it's unarmed damage. So now we should be able to have our talon effect even with the boxing glove, if I'm thinking that's correct. On test subjects. 
They do still bleed. Okay, cool. So Talon works with the boxing glove. Dang. Not good enough to get him in one shot, though. Still gotta punch him twice. Alright, we will go ahead and buy that, though. And we will trade him for our caps back? Maybe? The mute fruit. One of the reasons we were here. There, that should be six mute fruit. And let's see if we can get six tatoes. They should be... There we go. Now we've got all we need to plant back home. Let's kill this last supervisor, change their programming, go back to the camp, plant those, and then I'm gonna call it a night and might do some more recording for episode two tomorrow. And done, what did we get this time? Sturdy leather right arm. You know, we probably have some armor upgrades in here that I had just have not put on yet. Lightweight leather. Sturdy. I'm gonna stay with lightweight. Okay, we made it back to the camp. Let's get these guys planted. Excellent. Uh, I did go ahead and increase it to six of each, just because they don't cost a whole lot of uh, budget, really. And also, we have a fusion generator now. Or, well, we have the ability to make one. As soon as... Oh. No, I learned it. I just need to see what it takes. Crystal, we need... <laughs> six more crystal. Okay. Oh, I don't think I actually have that tagged right now as far as something that we need. Alright guys, I gotta see about calling it a night, and uh, if this is the end of episode 2, then I will see you in episode 3. Can Bob find the crystal he needs in time? On the next Fallout 76!